Kerry Roxbury School Board of Directors meeting, Wednesday, March 8th, 2023, um, starting at, it's like 634-ish. Um, first off, congrats to Lynn and Jill and Scott, who is going to be on his way and maybe on the phone. Um, and you. And you, Jim. Ah, uh, thank you. <clears throat> um, yeah, to another term, and I'm assuming everyone got duly sworn in, and Why I saw I saw you there, um, and I think Scott verified that he did. Yeah. Um, okay, excellent. So we are all official. Um, first order of business is public comment. Um, do you have any public comment either in the room or on the phone? Yes, uh, yeah, please go to the desk and, um, and just introduce yourself by name so you have it for the record and for the folks at home. Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is Stan Brinkerhoff. Um, I've lived in Montpelier for, for quite a while. And I've got three kids here, uh, two of which attend Union Elementary. Uh, and, and we love the school. Um, for the past 18 months, we've received feedback from the school uh, about our daughter's... Right. Okay. Oh, you want comments, if that's okay? Can I send an email? Yes, okay. Okay. Thank you for, yeah, thank you for yeah, coming thank in. For coming. Do you do you want to email it and we can read it? I'll I'll send it to you. Like, no, I'll send it in maybe to the board email. Okay. Do you want it to, you be, want read it to be read at or... the meeting tonight? We could do that. One of us could read it if you want. I... Just if you want it to be yeah. on on Orca or you know. I'm fine with being. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll just... uh, yeah, whatever you're most comfortable offer. with. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Anyone on uh, Zoom? Um, yeah, no, I just want to acknowledge that it's oftentimes tough to come before us and, and talk about sensitive things. So we appreciate those who do, and um, we are open to email and other communications that might be more private or, or easier to, to do. I know it's hard to hard to speak publicly, so we appreciate appreciate folks, and we definitely want to want to hear uh, what's going on and um, hear your stories. So uh, thank you for thank you for appearing, and uh, also thank you for acknowledging that this was hard and finding another way to, to go about getting it to us. Um, consent agenda. Do you have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Uh, and Scott, since you're brand new and hopefully you can hear us, and um, just a quick oh, well, you've been on a school board, I'm sure you know what a consent agenda is, but uh. <laughs> It is, it is a, a series of items that are relatively routine that we approve, so we don't have to go through them individually. Uh, we do them as a package. Um, and um, the idea is that you read all of them. Uh, and if you have questions, you can uh, ask that one or more items be pulled from the consent agenda for individual discussion, but otherwise we uh, approve them as a package to, to be more efficient. So. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So uh, do I have a second? A second. Uh, any discussion? I just have a question. Yeah. On the um, school calendar, Libby, 
Mm-hmm. The holidays, it's my understanding that we are supposed to match up with the other schools and other districts that are in the Central Vermont Career Center? Or 175 days. We just have to match them for 175 days. Got it. So that's why some of our holidays would be off of, not in line with, with their holidays. Because we all have different contracts. Got it. Different teacher days and student days and all that kind of stuff. So okay. it's not going to be 100%. Got it. Okay. Well, that I was just curious about that. Thanks. Um, I had had a question on the superintendent's report that was answered in the facilities and energy committee, but I just wanted to make sure that it was said out loud that the PCB testing was done, but that results will be back to us in about four weeks. So, and that was just on Main Street and Union. Main Street and Union. Yeah. So the results of that testing should be back in about four weeks. And the high school is is later. It's like slated for like two years from now. Oh, and they're also they're <clears throat> and that's just how back up the statement is correct. That is the schedule that they designed. Okay. We didn't have any say in it. Right. All right. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, board business. So this is when we uh reorganize um which means the appointment of our four um officer positions is that what they're called i should know by now i don't i think they're officer positions uh, which is the chairperson vice chairperson uh parliamentarian and clerk um and then reappointment to our committees. I mean, our makeup is relatively similar as it was before. Um, and I don't want to. Scott, can you can you hear? Because I think we'd we'd love input on what committees you may or may not want to be on before we. You could do the positions first. Cause... Yeah, we can do. Oh, we can... yes, I can hear, but I'm driving right now, so. Oh, yeah, perfect. Um, so positions to start with chair, I would be happy to serve <laughs> again. I also would be happy to throw it up for discussion. Um, I think we. Someone else that's interested in making sure. Are we going to hold this as like discussion and then like official nominations, or should we? How do? How should we? I think we nominate and then discuss. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I nominate Jim Murphy for chair. A uh, second. Second. Um, discussion. You want to do it? <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah, I, yeah, I'd be happy to do it. And also, like as you've noticed, like me and I have been working uh, more to to make it to elevate the vice chair and spread out a little more and of spread the out work. a little more of the work and um, agenda setting, et cetera. And it's I think it's working well, and we're definitely you know looking to to build and keep doing that. Keep going, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's. Of the discussion. I appreciate the efforts that you both have been putting in to um, lead our board, and that and the efforts to sort of elevate the vice chair position. I think is a, a great best practice just moving forward um, in terms of succession plan too, because things come up and people can't serve and they have to drop off, and you wouldn't want that to be our chair and not have somebody ready to fill those shoes. So thank you for both for doing that. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. No, it's, it's been an honor to, to serve and um, it's a wonderful board. I'm excited to continue the great work we've been doing and 
also nice to be kind of coming out of COVID and being able to, I think, focus more on the things that we're, we're excited about being here for. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and thanks to, to everyone, especially to, to Mia for being a great partner. So, um, Vice Chair, I will, I will nominate Mia if she wants to serve again. I second. Any discussion? I appreciate the chair. I feel like it's an awful lot for one person. I really, I wasn't sure if the elevation was in lieu of succession. I wasn't sure, which I would have been totally happy with. But I do think it's a great idea to share as much responsibility as you can. And I know it's a lot. So I appreciate that, Mia. And Jim, that you're sharing that. Sorry. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> so, Jill unfortunately cannot be here. She's made a wonderful parliamentarian. She didn't say she didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> so, therefore... <laughs> Well, um, she did also say that she's been very busy. So, very busy. but I don't think the parliamentarian role is the thing that's keeping her very busy. <laughs> no, that's that's, that's that's fine. Fine. We drag up time. Uh, so, in my, I mean, if she had, did she talk to you about committee assignments? Uh, she did not, and we might want to um, preemptively offer to remove her from a committee or two. Yes, she's not allowed. Committee. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the committee's assignment is a little um, heavier or less than the parliamentarian. That said, I'm sure if someone wanted to replace her as parliamentarian, she probably <laughs> would, would not be heartbroken. Well, Lynn and, and Scott have both served on school boards before. Have either Are either of you interested in serving as parliamentarian? Um, I have done that, but it's been a really long time. And honestly, I don't feel super com competent. Because it's, you know, if things get heated, it's complicated and you need to know what you're doing, I think. But I could work on learning this year and maybe let somebody off the hook next year. <laughs> get my Robert's rules in order. <laughs> yeah. 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 Scott, you have any interest from your uh, Randolph days? Um, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can. Uh, um, yeah, I'm. I am in the same uh, boat as Lynn. I would have to dust off my copy of Robert's Rules, um, and so I don't think I'd be the best at this point. Um, but would certainly be interested in the future. You should give that as a new board member gift. Yeah, Robert's Rules. Governance Corps. Velvet bound. Sadder. It's like saving money. Does anyone else have a burning desire to be part? I definitely am not interested. <laughs> and I would not like to nominate Jill, but uh, but want to make sure if anyone else has any. Kristen? Sage Green? Burning desire. <laughs> here. <laughs> Red? Oh, you're already, you're already clerk. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, you could switch. This is your opportunity. While Jill's absent. <laughs> All right. Uh, I nominate Jill Remick. I second. And absentia. Any discussion? We can all reconsider if Jill does yeah. express yeah, that she does not want to admit that. Yeah, that makes sense. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, Clerk, Brett, how are you feeling? I have a notebook. <laughs> we did call on you a couple of times in the past year, though. Take some notes. Minute -taking, don't we? I nominate Rhett Williams as clerk. <clears throat> Second. Third. Oh. <laughs> All right, any discussion? Do you want to do it? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you everyone for stepping up and 
serving in an officer capacity. Um, can I thank Anna also? Oh, yeah. As the, yes. Thank you, Anna. Oh, thank yeah, Anna. Yeah, no, Anna, Anna is the Uber, Uber clerk. <laughs> Uber lots of things. So, uh huh. CBCC. CBCC. Oh. CBCC. Uh, it's Jill again, right? Yeah. All right. So we have to appoint our CBCC Chair. board member. Yeah. Um. She's the chair of the yeah, board. Yeah, she's the chair. So I think we need to. Yeah, I appoint or I'll nominate. Nominate. I think. I think I'm not supposed to nominate. I'll nominate Jill Rennick for the. Um, is it CV CVCC CVCC board? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Jill. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Really. Yeah. That's a that's a big lift. That was a big yeah. lift. So committee assignments. Um, First off, Jill's on three committees. I think we definitely want to bring her down to two. Uh, and I would say that the CVCC board would count as one of them, in my opinion. As so a, as a committee, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so she's actually on four, if you count yes. this list plus yeah. the CVCC. Yes. Um, so I think that's the first thing that we should do in her absentia. Um, because of Jill's <clears throat> overextended commitment, she is significantly pulled back from participating in facilities and energy. So that may be an easy step off for her, um, as in, you know, in lieu of her being here and offering on on her on her behalf. Um, and we had also just discussed the, you know, currently we're four with Jill, meaning it would take, I guess, three to have a quorum in order to move forward with. Mm meeting and decision making. So if we were shaved down to three, it would allow us to proceed if just two people are in right. attendance. So so that's actually, yeah, thank you for that contact because that's the committee that immediately came to mm -hmm. mind. One, because the finance is, I think, a little more in her bailiwick and it's, it's a four meeting a year committee. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think switching horses in midstream on negotiations um, yeah. Yeah, it would not it would, it wouldn't be awful, but um it's nice to have that continuity. I do think it would make sense eventually to offer to swap out with J somebody to offer to swap out with Jill for negotiations. I think that's the next logical step. Yeah. That if she was just on finance and CVCC, that would make sense. That would be Yeah, yeah. definitely. And negotiations, you know, we're gonna have perhaps a multi-year contract, so. Right. Um, and we just have AFSCME next year to negotiate. Yeah. So not everybody in that committee needs to be yeah. there for AFSCME. Uh, yeah, so I think we can transition her off pretty easily after okay. the spring. Yeah. And I would be, I'd be interested in that because I've done it before and I'm oh. on the other one now, so. Oh, that's right, you, yes. Anyone who's interested in negotiating. You're on it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the same. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I think it's worth considering all of these as a clean slate and okay. then everybody can just say, oh, I yeah. haven't served on finance before, but I'm interested in doing so. So thank you for that comment. Yes. And, and, and I'm totally happy to try to help Jill with the puzzle, but with the caveat that at the next board meeting that she's at, maybe is when we make it official so that she can have a say to say, actually, I really would love to stay on facilities and energy and come off of fine, you know, yeah. whatever. So I think it would be helpful for us to be thinking about where Jill is the best fit, just so we can see, like, as Kristen was saying, it's probably best if we have three folks on each committee. And then that way we know, you know, what our numbers look like, but I also don't want to be like, we're making this decision for her without her here. And it's a yeah. final decision. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we can either, we can do one of two ways. We can either just put, we can approve it next week or next time formally, or we can just let Jill know that we will make an amendment and just do some switching. Right. Yeah. If, that works. That totally works. Um, so let's just go committee by committee, and I'll read the current lineup of folks that are still here. And um, if people are sick of the committee and want to move off, 
that's great. Uh, if people want to stay on, um, that's great too. Uh, and then you guys know, just not making any decisions till we get down the list and see if it kind of makes sense of itself. And if we need to, to have some discussion after that, we can, we can definitely do that just to make sure it's balanced. And I think, you know, Amy to have three per committee is, is ideal. And I think if, you know, keeping keeping in mind people's workloads as well on these makes a lot of sense too um so our current oceans committee of current members is jill Rhett, me and lynn uh how do those folks feel about continuing to serve on negotiations i am i am definitely in and I think kind of where we are in a mid negotiations process. It makes a lot of sense. I'm good with staying on. You're good with staying on. Right. Okay. And then we'll just confirm with Jill. Is there anyone who has a burning itching desire to join the negotiations committee? That's a no for now. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, and all the, we, so many we we had talked about get, making like a little paragraph and sort of a description of these committees prior to tonight which didn't happen yeah. it's fine we're really close the equity committee is really close but maybe we so, could do, kind of like do that quickly i mean just sort of verbally um say what the time commitment is for people who yeah. maybe don't know some of these i'm not sure um so the, the time commitment on negotiations when negotiations are current is is pretty stiff. Um, you know, frequent monthly meetings, uh, you know, generally a couple hours. Um, we all love each other, but, you know, it's a negotiation. Um, so I think you have to have a certain kind of mindset for that. Uh, and it's also oftentimes a negotiation with, you know, people that teach your children. Uh, which I think needs to be noted. Um, and then, you know, depending on how well the negotiations go, sometimes it can involve, you know, some sort of mediated process. Uh, and that can take a nine, 10 hour chunk of a day of your time at some, some point in, in the future. Uh, so it's, and then, but then, you know, it goes away uh, when you reach an agreement or an agreement is reached. And depending on how long the, you know, it, it can be an intense spring followed by a spring where there's absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and obviously the purpose is, is negotiating with our three unions for, um, you know, for their, their, um, their agreements. The finance committee, the finance committee um, was created a few years ago, basically with the idea that it would meet with our uh, superintendent and uh, our uh, yeah, business manager uh, about the the kind of an in-depth look into the finances and the budget of the school. Um, you know, we are, as a board, we're not presented with a line by line budget of, of what everything is, is spent on. And we only have so much capacity to go deep into the budget. So the idea of the finance committee was that the finance committee would meet uh, basically quarterly uh, with the superintendent and business manager for a deeper dive into the budget and into the financial matters of the school to to essentially kind of ensure that the higher level information that came to the board was accurate and, and kind of reflective of the information that the board should be getting. Uh, and that if there were, uh, you know, issues or clarifications or other things that should be brought to the attention of the board, uh, that a subset of board members had a deep enough understanding of the budget and the finances to be able to flag that and ensure that that the the board got that. So it's really kind of a um, 
a check on ensuring that we're getting the information from the administration that, that we need to make good decisions. Uh, I would say it's not the most time intensive committee. It's really about four meetings. Um, you know, were there, I think, some sort of issue that needed needed delving into? Um, there, you know, there might be an extra meeting or so to to explore that. I think the the biggest thing that I'm kind of looking for in folks to serve on this are people who are uh, budget savvy, finance savvy. Uh, who are going to be able to, you know, see a bunch of numbers and make sense of them and, and ask the right questions, uh, which is not necessarily me. Uh, but, um, you know, we definitely have have folks who, who have those skills and, and that's, you know, uh, the ideal, the ideal member. So it's, it's, it's kind of low commitment. And I think if you've got a certain level of, of expertise, uh, it's definitely helpful. And Anakit was quite skilled at this. Um, right now, we just have have Rhett and uh, Jill. Uh, you know, and, and Jill works at the tax department, so she has an understanding of of school finances that um, makes her, I think, a pretty valuable member of this committee. Uh, you know, and Rhett obviously has um, has been great as well. Huh? Math wizard. Yeah. Um, so I think we definitely could use, uh, assuming Rhett, you're still interested. Um, and I'm not going to make that assumption, so I'll ask you. Uh, but um, regardless of the interest of the current members, uh, even if, if, if both of the current members are still interested, there is a seat that, that needs to be filled on this. Any interest in filling that seat? Um, so, Red, how do you feel about staying on? I'm happy with staying on. If, other, if a couple other people wanted to go in, I'd be happy to let it go. It's um, it's not a huge commitment. I definitely learn a lot. It's an opportunity to ask some questions and 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 dig into some stuff and 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 learn to understand things a little a little better. So, I don't mind doing it, but. Um, I'm not a business whiz, but you know we can ask questions about where things aren't where we might have expected them to be, and, and get some answers, and hopefully bring that back to the board. It happens, you know, quarterly right before each right before a board meeting, so it's it's often over in thirty minutes, unless there are some things that we don't expect to see, and then we go into it. have a burning desire to also scott you're interested i i know my way around the spreadsheet and awesome balance a lot of budget or okay. develop and work on budgets so great i'm happy to great. lend a hand excellent um so we will go with that slate with the caveat that jill may have um, we have a desire to, to step off. Um, the policy committee, um, have a quick overview unless you want to give an overview, Emma. Go for it. So the policy committee essentially uh, makes sure that the policies of the board and the policies are pretty important because we are a, um, a board that governs largely through our policies. Uh, that our policies are are up to date, uh, reflective of the values of the district and the community. Um, that uh, you know we have all the policies we need, uh, et cetera. Um, meets fairly regularly. Uh, we've been most of our work in the last year has been uh, updating some policies that we felt could be uh, better updated to match. I think both the the values of the board and uh, you know some newer model policies that came out from the Vermont School Boards Association uh, as well as a couple of our policies were a little overly long we thought we could could simplify to make them a little clearer uh, and we've also done some work adopting some new policies both some 
uh, required policies because new required policies come out, um, as well as uh, some not required policies, but required policies that we thought were would be well served, like the uh, uh, the policies on on library that we're currently considering. Um, meets about monthly to monthly and a half. Um, well. Right, we have been meeting like every other week. Yeah, we sometimes but, every other week. Sometimes one, it 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 varies a but little. But we're trying to limit that. Yeah, um, yeah, we we were doing a bunch of drafting, so we're, we're meeting every other week. I think we're going to try to go more to a monthly schedule. Uh, but it's one of those things where if yeah we decide that we want to rewrite a big chunk of our policies, it can be a deep dive for a little while. Um, so I'd say it's it's one of the more work intensive. Um, Committees, it's also, I think, one of the more interesting committees if you, because you get to work on a lot of issues and, you know, and the policies really touch what we do. Anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I just would hope that over the next year, I hope that we move, we were sort of doing this work to sort of tidy up some of our policies. They hadn't been looked at in a long time. They weren't aligned with the um, uh, VSBA policies. And so we were doing a lot of like sort of cleanup work with, around that. And so I would hope that we could like move into, um, you know, sometimes issues are brought to us. So one of the things that we're working on currently is that the student representatives brought to us some concerns from student population around the curriculum. Um, and so we looked at, you know, should we potentially, here, here's this red flag, here's an issue that's important to students. Um, how can we be responsive as a school board? And like Jim said, since we primarily govern through policy, then that's you know where we can have a, a big impact on something. So we looked at our um, potentially adopting a new curriculum policy, and ultimately we decided to go with revising our diversity, equity, and inclusion language around curriculum. Um, so we're working on that right now, but that's the type of stuff that I would like to see the policy committee be a little more responsive to um, community input. Excellent new addition. Uh, right now it's uh, Emma, me, and Rhett. Um, I'm certainly happy to keep serving. I don't know, Emma, if you're happy to keep serving. And... Yeah, I'm happy to keep serving. And I also think that it's really good to have somebody with a legal mind on. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy I'm to glad it. that Jim is willing to continue to serve. Um, and I don't know how Rhett feels about it, but yeah, it's. And it, what we've been trying, what we did do was we went from four members down to three so that because it is challenging to coordinate four people's schedules. Um, and so when we went down to three members, it was so that two people could make quick progress on things when needed um, as a quorum. So I wonder if how big we want it, but. Yeah, I think three is a good number. How are you feeling right about Policy I, just, I, mean, I feel like I barely contributed and want to go do yeah I want to I don't have to, I don't know if I have a legal mind but I don't want to stop unless is there anyone else who's itching to be on the policy committee it's something that interests me and I've got some experience um but I also yeah I understand the the numbers issue I mean, we can try it again with four people. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to try it with four people. I mean, I think it's I think it's going to be a richer discussion with four people. Yeah. Um, let's go for it. If we're having quorum problems, we can reconsider. Right, and then another thing, problems. another thing that we had played with back when Andrew was on the committee was having one of us be sort of like a not non official, <laughs> you know? Yes. So in terms of a quorum, so. That's something we could discuss again if it becomes an issue, scheduling becomes an issue. Yeah. Let's start with four official members or people have a vote and then if, if it becomes. Great. I feel like the, the work on the policy committee is, you know, still, you know, it's run through everybody through the readings. So we all have our chances to really put input or True. give feedback if we want to. So I feel like it's kind of unique in that, in that aspect. Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
All right, excellent. Well, let's go with those four. Um, Jim, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, how many committees is customary per board member? Two to three. Um, I think everyone's on at least two, and a few people are on three. Um, you might want to start with two and see how it it integrates into your life. Uh, it, it it can definitely add. Um, although if you want to jump in at three, then go ahead. And yeah, if if you're like a fourth person on a committee, it's pretty easy to you know reshuffle the the yeah the alignment if if someone's schedule is not able to accommodate. It. Uh, the equity committee. Who's the chair? Kristen, are you chair? Or Mia? Yeah, I'm the chair. Do you want to give an overview? Sure. Um, we're uh, also pretty new. I think we started about two years ago. We have <clears throat> our work is to essentially try to integrate equity into all the work of the board and across the district. Um, recent things that we did is we um, drafted and held the um, climate survey of teachers and staff in the schools. Um, and we developed an equity review tool, which um, <clears throat> I think we could still use a little bit more work on implementation and um, helping ourselves and the rest of the board figure out how to actually make use of it. Um, but that's the general um, purpose of the committee. We try to meet biweekly. So pretty much like on the alternating Wednesdays from board meetings, that's our current schedule, but we can certainly change that up. And the big thing we're doing right now is working with Libby to figure out which firm we want to hire to run an equity audit for the district. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of a sense of what we do. And the current members in addition to Mia are Kristen, Seiji, and Lynn. So first, you know, to the four of you, desire to continue on the committee, or are you looking for um, a switch, or at least next step? Seiji? Yep. Kristen? Yep, I'd like to continue. Just, you know, seconding what Emma Mia yeah. said uh, about the equity review tool and that uh, it feels like that needs some refinement and also just really giving it like a context and a role in our work. So I'd like to see that through because a lot of work was put into that mm -hmm. last year. So, yeah. Um, is there anyone who is not on the committee who is who would like to be? I just I would love to be someday, <laughs> time permitting, but. Not now. Okay, so it sounds You're like we're anytime. Thanks. Sounds like we're pretty comfortable with that lineup. Um, the Facilities and Energy Committee, uh, Kristen, do you want to give an overview? Otherwise, I'm happy to. Sure. Could facilities I... and Energy Committee, I think, is two years old to the day. <laughs> um, and the Facilities and Energy Committee was created at a time when there was just many different facilities, uh, issues, topics, and opportunities coming up. So um, it seemed to, I think it was really the uh, idea of Andrew Stein, a former board member who was sort of, had been on the board for quite some time and was seeing all these things coming down the pike and that it would make sense to have a committee dedicated to getting an understanding of those things, being liaisons between uh, the board and community members that had vested interests in these various different um, facilities projects. Uh, so we work very closely with Andrew LaRosa. Libby is often at our meetings. Um, and we do a lot of just staying, staying apprised of, of kind of what's happening with the facilities since they are like essential components of how our kids are learning and experiencing, uh, their education in the district. And, uh, we were very much involved in the review of the track proposal, um, that came from administration. And we are currently working on developing a net zero resolution, uh, for, for the board. So um yeah so those are the two kind of big big pushes but when we meet monthly we have a standing monthly meeting first wednesday of the month prior to the school board meeting uh we've been working we've been meeting a, more frequently as we get 
some finality to the net zero resolution. But I think the ultimate goal is to be meeting monthly. Sure. That's, that's great. Um, current members, Kristen, Emma, and Seiji, uh, how are you feeling about continuing? All okay. Uh, and assuming Jill's going to be okay with with stepping off, is there anyone else who's interested in in joining that committee? With the caveat that I think we want to, you know, that if, if Jill wants to continue on, that would affect the numbers. I might be. Maybe. Okay. Great. Is that Lynn? I have two committees already, so I think I could do it there. Excellent. Uh, the final committee is superintendent evaluation, which not surprisingly evaluates the superintendent. Uh, Mia, do you want to give an overview or do you want me to? Well, I think you did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I will add is that one, one item on our to-do list that we need to get to is um, developing a self-evaluation for the board as well. Even though that's not board isn't in our title, we've taken it upon ourselves to start to think about well, how do we assess how the board is doing in the main functions, you know, in, in, in our main functions and, and serving the community the way we're supposed to. So that's what I would add to, in addition to evaluating. So, I would say facilitating the process. For it's evaluation. just called the evaluation committee. The evaluation committee. Assessment. Uh, <laughs> um, Yes, and surprisingly, the superintendent evaluation committee is not a super old committee. One might think it would be given <laughs> the functions of the board, um, but it it uh, it meets Rough, fairly regularly, roughly monthly. Once we get into the evaluation season, <laughs> yeah. it's a little bit more frequent than that. Yeah. But it's about monthly the yeah. rest of the year. Yeah, and yeah, it's it really kind of does a yeah, you know, a, a dive into how Libby's doing. We, you know, we work to get some information from her reports, uh, you know, kind of looking at also school survey information, et cetera. Um, and then we bring that to the board for, for feedback and for final evaluation, which, um, yeah, is used to help Libby do her job better um, and also in, you yeah, know, compensation, et cetera, decisions. Um, Right now we have three, uh, Rhett, Mia, and me. I'm certainly happy to serve. Uh, Rhett and Mia, you good with continuing? Um, and Anakit, you know, due to his, um, the fact that he is term ended, um, we certainly could could have one more person on there if someone was interested. Rhett, you're on four committees. I'm sure you know that already. Four. You feel okay about that? You are in fourth grade. Unless somebody else doesn't feel okay about that, I feel like there's work that's being done. The finance committee. I learn a lot. I mean, I'm learning a lot. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm bringing a lot of expertise to any of them, but mm -hmm. um, trudging along and trying you're to bring an outside big... perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a big system, and the more ways I can look at it, the better I understand it. Well, I definitely appreciate you being on on that many committees, and it also and the superintendent evaluation committee. We're also essentially reevaluating our evaluation tool, which is we're sort of in the middle of a process of of change, and I feel like moving away from something when you're in the middle of a process isn't good form. Yeah. So anybody else, I mean, I, I, I would be, I'm comfortable with three on the superintendent evaluation committee. Yeah, All right. Sure. Unless there's somebody who really wants to do it. Going once, going twice. So what I have in negotiations committee, Jill Rett, me, Lynn, finance, Rhett, Scott, Jill, policy, 
me, Emma, Rhett, Scott, Equity, Kristen, Mia, Seiji, Lynn, Facilities and Energy, Kristen, Lynn, Emma, Seiji, Superintendent of Evaluation, me, Rhett, Mia. Okay. Does that sound right? Do you want to approve the committee and then we can reach out to Jill and if we need to make an adjustment or two based on her feedback, we can do that next time. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I move to approve those committee assignments as you just read them out loud. Okay, second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. We have committees and officers. We are organized. <laughs> uh, so talking about organized, uh, yeah. Um, now we're going to kind of do the next step in our continuing process of um, our priorities and indicators for success um, coming out of the process that Nathan led. Uh, and Mia has come up with a wonderful exercise to, to help get us started, which she's kindly not only put together, but agreed to explain. Okay. So with, once again, a lot of gratitude to Nathan. We see you up there. We hope we do you proud in getting this over the finish line. Um, we have, based on the last conversation we had, I think about a month ago, um, established three core priority areas, the themes of closing the academic achievement gaps, um, belonging safely and safety and wellness. That's the second one and connection and accountability with our community is the third one. So we're going to divide uh, the 10 of us. We're not going to count Libby into this, um, separation out. We're going to ask Libby to float between the three groups. We're going to divide the 10 of us up into three groups. Each group is going to take one of those priority themes. And the main um, question that we're working to answer is, what does success look like within this theme? What should we be aiming for? Because that's how we're going to name these indicators of success. That's the idea. You can use um, the notes that Libby drafted up from the last meeting the that's the Google got Google Doc title <laughs> is draft priorities questions and indicators. It was also linked in um, Libby's superintendent's report. So if you need an easy way to find it, you can find it there. Um, those notes are from our most previous, most recent conversation where we both named the themes and then asked a bunch of questions that would help us, I think, guide us toward answering these this question of what does success look like? What are our indicators of success? So we could do this. We could divide ourselves up in a number of ways. We could just count off or people, we could vote with our feet and people could go to the theme that they are most interested in, or I could assign you. What do you want to do? Your money. Yes, they are closing the academic achievement gap, belonging, safety, and wellness, and connection and accountability with our community. Scott, I just emailed it to your new board email. I don't know if you have access to that yet. All right. Okay. Yeah. So I oh, just emailed good. the link so to this gotta, document so you can follow along. Yeah. I mean, I'll pick number three if we're gonna call out our preferences. Oh, great. If you wanna okay. say I'd like to work on number three also. I would like to be in number one. Merrick, where would you like to go? I think number three as well. Okay. I'm going to give Scott a chance to think a little bit more since he's just opened the document. Rhett, where are you going to go? Uh, safety. Okay. You're number two. Lynn? Um, I could do three or two. Okay. Wherever you need a okay. body. I'll do one. One. All right. So far, we've got... Okay, let's just keep going. Jim, where do you want to be? One, two, or three? I kind of lean towards one, but I'm hearing a lot of ones and threes, so I'm feeling two is in need. Okay. So I'd be happy to do two. Say, G, you said three, and Emma said three, and Zach, what would you like to do? Um, I can do one or two, whatever. All right. Why don't we take Need Zach it. in one? Because Merrick, you said three. three. Great. 
once go over to there under American Shoes, U.S. History, um, threes, I don't know, right here in that middle table, and then twos gather around Rhett. Did you say two? Yeah, gather around Rhett if you said two. And Scott, where where do you want to go? Is it even right now? Eh, more or less. Great. Okay, great. So threes are in the middle here. Actually, threes go to where Sagey and Emma are because they're right there. Okay. Yeah. Where are two? So which one? I think two. One to go to two. Yeah. And so two is actually right where you are, right? Red? Yeah. yeah. And then academic achievement, we're going to be right over there. Ones. And we're going to take, what do we have here? Actually, we only have about 20 minutes left on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Let's take 15 in these groups. And we'll probably get to the point with the groups, hopefully by the end of the 15 minutes, where you have a draft I mean, of what these indicators of success look like. I, can we go a little longer? I think we can go a little longer. I think I don't think we're going to take like. Can we go till eight total? It's not I think we go to eight total. Okay. I think the policy reading and oh, the okay. policy monitor. Yeah. I think just, yeah. That, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so that's one, three, two. And we're asking Libby to float and be sort of like, if you have questions that are like, how would this show up in a school? That's a great question for Libby. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. One, one more. Yeah. Just to have your attention to us where you all start talking. We have, let's take it to a quarter up. That gives us about 20 minutes to huddle in our groups and try to draft what the indicators of success are. with them? Great. So we don't have edit access, but that's okay. Yeah, we can take notes in other places. Yep. Um, okay. You've got it on your phone. I love it. My computer is like about to die. The computer Sweet in your pocket. Stuff. I have it on my computer here. I copy and pasted yeah. it. So we can we can refer to it. Plus some of my notes. Ooh, so you share that with me. Yes. Ooh, Ooh, good. Oh, I like it. Um yeah. sure. Well, I mean, this is just what was already there. Yeah, but I yeah. like that you yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always no questions. Um, so I did have one question and I didn't, it just occurred to me because I don't know if I missed it in the last meeting that we did this discussion. Did we talk about indicators as quantitative, qualitative, nothing? We didn't, I, oh, I don't recall slate. that we did. Okay. I just and didn't know if we had that. My opinion is that they don't have to be yeah. quantitative. Yeah. But, okay. I don't remember. Okay. Yep. Great. So, and then these were the questions slash ideas that were generated yeah. by the group. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so at that meeting, the questions are, where are the gaps? Does the board want to zero in on a specific area um, where consistent focus and data over time could be provided? Um, where does Jedi, justice, equity, diversity, inclusion fit into this? Does the board need student input here? Elementary, middle, high school have very different measures. How is district defining high levels of learning? Where does multiple pathways fit? Is this where recruit, retain, and develop high quality staff at all positions fits? Not a small, uh, let me just take one of those questions. Um, so I had done some thinking about this um, prior to the meeting. And I mean, I think we're, where my mind went was just sort of, yeah. and Libby always says it very articulately, just like the predictor where like, you know, certain demographics markers are not predictive in terms of like achievement and outcome. So that's, that's big and broad, you know, you know, if we were to make that sort of blanket statement, that's massive and probably not achievable in a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think we have to be just for the year. Right. Right. I mean, so if it's big and it's aspirational, we know it's just sort of like cardinal direction. Like that's, you know, the, the ultimate right. goal. Right. Um, but <clears throat> I was thinking along, you know, those lines, which I certainly think, you know, the equity piece, you know, I'm thinking about where Jedi fits in, it certainly pulls, pulls that piece in. So, um, so that was, something I was thinking about. Um, 
Yeah. So I don't, I just don't know how specific, you know, we want to get, I mean, because how will we use these indicators ostensibly we'll be coming back and revisiting each year and saying, where, how did we do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And along the way, because I would imagine if those indicators might inform maybe some, they might inform the presentations that we ask for what the board learning focuses over the course of the year. Is that essentially how we're going to use these indicators yeah um yeah I imagine right. that, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. like sure like data that we're that asking for yeah 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 okay mm -hmm. um so i've been talking there and stuff what do you think that <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'm gonna pull my chair back so i'm not imposing <laughs> um for which just generally or a specific question? I mean, I, th I think generally for the moment, right? Yeah. The idea is that we're trying to generate an indicator that would show we are closing the achievement gap. And I don't know if we ever defined that. I was not that meeting. So would that be through like uh, studies conducted or using national state data? For, for the indicators to gather those, or do we have that already? Well, and district data, yes. right? We want to see how we're doing as a district on meeting efficiency standards. Mm -hmm. And maybe we would then maybe we would want to compare it to national or state data, but I think it's more about how we're doing as right. a district. Okay. Libby, when we when educators talk about the like closing the gap, are they saying is that is the context for that like the kids who are in various different marginalized communities are performing the same as their peers? Is that what they're thinking of, or is it just like every kid is doing it? I, I, that's would be helpful context. So, because there, there's no predictive factor yes. based on an identity status. Yeah. That's the yeah. Uh, so an indicator for this might be. Uh, it might just be something like that. We strive to have zero predictive factors for proficiency status. But you know what I mean? For, for, for meeting proficiency. Yeah, for meeting uh -huh. proficiency for any, any child in our school system. Uh-huh. And so another another way to say that would be every child has what they, you know, not just what they need, but is able to meet proficiency standard the guards i make it more definitive is meeting is meeting is meeting so every child is meeting proficiency standards regardless of identity or status yeah because that kind of sounds like popularity Right, right. <laughs> a lot of time at school. <laughs> Somebody comes to high school every day. Yeah. Um. Right. I haven't thought about that, but yes. So, right. Identity or social. And I think the other thing that is important for the board that to put here is not just achievement gap, but opportunities. I wanted to so ask you like, about that. Who's, ta who's taking a, who's taking advantage of the uh, um, Act that is currently taking advantage of Curly College? What are their what is the what is the identity of the kids who do that primarily? What about the identities of the kids who take advantage of flexible pathways or AP classes? How many kids are taking AP the test for AP? You know, right. are those kids? Uh -huh. Right. Those things, I think, we don't show you enough high school data, and that would be good high school data mm -hmm. to show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about? Um, but that's more opportunity, right, than mm -hmm. achievement necessarily, right? Yeah, yeah, opportunity that is correlated or causing achievement, yeah. right, right, yeah. And then what about kids with disabilities? Would we should we name that specifically, regardless of if you're yeah. going to say right. regardless of and identity, like, socioeconomic status, or if or just oh, I always put that in that as an identity as an identity. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, yeah, they're depressed, they pop, and that um, the of that is yeah, or or visibly disengaged. I think a lot of times it's kids at like yeah, you know, upper middle school, high school levels. Yeah. Who may be feeling a lot of stress or a lot of unwellness, 
we're better able to hide it. And, you know, and, and we know another thing was, is, is, is yeah, it's often time. The kids who aren't happy aren't here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's, I, I think, uh, yeah. go ahead. It also reflects on the, uh, in some ways, on the well being of the family as a whole. Yeah. <clears throat> When I um my my doctoral dissertation was actually on school climate and yeah. safety and belonging, so I have I, I did a lot of reading about those sorts of things, although it's a time ago. Um, so I'm really interested in it. I, I think also it would be um really nice to have some um, group discussions with kids where there was a topic mm -hmm. specifically or some kind of small round tables yep. where kids could it could be a little more open-ended because when you do a survey you get it it has to be set up to get a lot of quantitative data but yes. when you have a discussion it's harder to deal with the qualitative data that comes in but it it gives a different view right um Another and one of the things that we did that Amanda was especially instrument, instrumental in. Amanda yeah. Yeah. is especially interested in minority yes. and marginalized communities. And when we were trying to figure out how to spend the um, the rescue plan money, she organized affinity spaces with neurodivergent families, um, BIPOC, um, special ed families, and maybe low income, maybe second language. I'm not sure if low income groups were there or single moms that might have been. I mean, she might have had one with like single parent families. Um, so, and I know that there's work um, that Amanda brought it forward and it ended up in the write-ups, but um, there is an affinity space in the middle school. Um, and so that's a good place, you know, to find sort of that, that small group roundtable discussions with some of these groups if they're already established and hopefully they are um, at least in some ways i'm not sure if every group is has a, a functional group like a community in the school system but i think the bipoc groups do um so i don't know uh, um we were okay okay we were wondering about well i was wondering and i asked last week or last uh, meeting a little bit about how the um the behavioral dashboard is being used and how that's progressed because when we heard about it it was early november and there were some differences and it was new and just wondering, you know, we're if we're trying to find some benchmarks, that might be one place where we might find some kind of benchmark. I don't know necessarily what that might look like because we also are wary of trying to reduce disruptive, trying to track reduction of disruptive behaviors as opposed to tracking feelings of safety you, you know we're looking at it in terms of negative as opposed to looking in terms of positive and whether or not a behavior dashboard even functions in a way that's not kind of identifying challenging behavior as opposed to feelings of safety i think the behavior dashboard is going to be a indicator for you all it might be something we bring to you as evidence of an indicator i think that's right what we're trying to identify you know just how do we even measure some of this stuff so if you said if you said an indicator that you know all students uh feel 
like they belong so like in that, their school system, right? Like, right? It's a pretty broad statement. I could bring you student survey data. Okay. I could bring right. you teacher yeah, so data like, around like every kid having one adult or two adults that they care, you know, that they don't care about. Like I can bring you lots of different data to show that. Right. I think you want to make these as broad, sorry, sorry mm -hmm. make them as broad as you can so that we can bring a variety of data to show, right? Um, in term, I think there's a difference between the social emotional health of our students, which belong in with fit in discipline. Yeah. Right. So you might want to think: Do you do you want an indicator around discipline? I, I feel like right. I mean, I want to know that. What I want to know is that teachers feel like they have the right supports yeah. when it comes to the still about like. When I first started, like oh, she just put an article out saying that we're going to buy Libya Mercedes, and then then we'll get a bunch of people. Can <laughs> the point that's not funny? <laughs> <Some waterproofs. laughs> I don't know if our town would appreciate our. No, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> I will. Not. And the thing is, but, people... take, take it. Start, yeah, take take it. it. <laughs> it's it's a, it's out there now. <laughs> He's reminding us that we're being recorded. Yeah. We know, we know. Wait, but that's like the right group's talk. How does that work? We're all being recorded at once. Yeah. It's a bunch of crosstalk. Yeah, but it's yeah. gets who digests what? Like, I, 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 I want to write this down each. Bring oh, you're bringing like down and up? Yeah, okay. It sounds like so. You weren't like the whole time. Fascinating. Okay. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to spread that rumor. Okay. So we've got. Um, Climate survey, qual uh, qualitative data, listening sessions, et cetera, tracking our communication back to folks, maybe behavior dashboard or Google survey or spreadsheet of some kind, evidence of newsletters, podcasts, front porch forum posts, et cetera, Google analytics, perhaps on our site. Um, Good question. Yeah. One of the other commit, the existing committees um, mentioned something about a climate survey. That it is... is yeah. Those so that's the, of the like internal, mm -hmm. not the community climate. Right. Yeah. yeah, the visioning committee was more of the climate survey for the community. Yeah. And that's where we had all the information oh. trying to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then, and then Mia was talking about on the evaluation committee, this, which is currently the mm -hmm. superintendent evaluation committee, mm -hmm. that they're working on a board evaluation tool. Yeah. So that could include a climate survey, like of the board's work. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, a you know what? I'm, do, you know, on dupl duplicating right. efforts, right? Yeah. And so that's why I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Those would actually be I didn't know if interesting if you're like traveling or need some some stuff to read. Uh, all the visioning feedback because it was <laughs> it was a lot of stuff we got back from the community. I bet. Um, the climate survey was interesting, and, and we did try to distill it down to mm -hmm. you know more digestible format because it was like hundreds of questions. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm thinking specifically about like how do we measure success or what does success yeah, yeah, yeah. look like for this one? Yeah. And so I'm I'm what I'm thinking is you like if 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 there is a communications committee and that has work, if you have like a longitudinal um survey tool that will that will give you a measurement of success. Because mm -hmm. you'll you'll be able to get snapshots of the community's yeah. climate over time, and presumably, if the community, if the communications committee is successful in doing those pieces, then you yeah. capture that from the yeah. survey. Yeah, um, and you're absolutely right. Like maybe that climate survey does not come out of the communications committee. Maybe it comes out of the, mm -hmm. the evaluation committee. But that we could still use it as a data point yeah, of success. Exactly. Yeah. As long as it's as long as it's created with this in mind. Yeah. And with, yeah, to collect the data that you want mm -hmm. to then be able to use them. I, I think the communications committee idea is just definitely a really good one. Um, do you did we all talk about it before? I feel like it's the first time I'm hearing about it actually. I don't know if it's been. It, it's been talked about, like Amanda was the one that really pushed for more um, listening sessions um, and like reach, you know, outreach to the community. And at that time we talked about like, does this happen as like separate committee work or does this happen as like, do we all just sort of pitch in and make it happen? And that's how we ended up doing it. 
I no, I, I like really like the idea of a communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's like a so it's like on the books, and there's a mm -hmm. more, it's more formalized. Process. And there's an opportunity if if there are those community listening sessions, or I can't remember what how you yeah. described it yeah. for um yeah for qualitative data generated from those interactions. Yes. Yeah. In addition to the quantitative data through something like a survey. Yeah. And even the surveys become sort of qualitative because we only get like 50 responses <laughs> and they're mostly long answer. And so, it, you know, it's hard to mm -hmm. get um, quantitative data mm -hmm. of something like this. You know, maybe like how many people vote for the budget <laughs> could I be a quantitative that, data. Like the survey wasn't 100%. Like, like, it was 60%. The response rate from the climate survey among oh among staff I don't remember I think it was around sixty percent that's right for a long time okay well we're at our time and I I'm feeling pretty good about our measures of success I scarce agey yeah yeah <laughs> he was like Libby's coming Libby's coming run <laughs> Um, do you want to hear our overview or you want to wait for the big reveal? We got time. Do we? So we're talking about measures of success of the connection with community and accountability. And the, the main idea that we all agree with is that it's probably time to form a committee around this. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Yeah, it could be a welcome news. Yeah, well, we're going to be unified in that. <laughs> um, what would this committee do? Um, well, all of the things that are listed under that. Quest. So, uh, you know, holding, making sure to hold listening sessions, um, following up with communications to the board, perhaps issuing a newsletter, um, improving non parent access to board materials. Yeah, um, summarizing. Um, summarizing meetings and and reporting out to the community on that. What was the principle um, of gathering student input more systematically? What's that? The principle of psychology okay. that you mentioned. Oh yeah, so we talked about diffusion of responsibility. Well, Are you familiar with that? It's like a psychological theory that. Um, basically, like the easiest way to explain it is that if there's like somebody that fell on the street and you're the only person walking down the street, you're going to feel responsible to help that person. But if there's, you know, a busy street in New York City, um, you're going to think to yourself, someone else will help that person. So it's a diffusion of responsibility. And actually, like people are more likely to sort of step up to the plate if they're the only person. And so turning it into committee work we're hoping will ensure that some of these things that we've been talking about as a board, as sort of a weakness of the board will happen. It's an accountability thing. Um, but measures of success would be potentially climate survey. We mentioned um, how Mia talked about a board evaluation tool on that committee, the superintendent evaluation committee becoming like an evaluation committee and not just about you, but also the work of the board. And um and that potentially that climate survey goes out through that committee or the, the new communications committee could help with that um, qualitative data from community via listening sessions, qualitative data from board members, um, tracking our communication back to folks. So we had talked about like, is there a way to sort of keep track of when people bring issues to us and what communication has circled back to them and keeping it in a place so that board members can know where we stand on looping back to um, topics that have been brought up to us. Um, and so Seiji had mentioned, is, is there a way for us to tap into a tool like a behavior dashboard? Or do we use like a Google survey or a spreadsheet of some kind? But I think um, and then just general evidence of like, we were doing a newsletter or a podcast or from Forge Forum posts or all of those things and kind of tracking that stuff. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we're ready. We're coming back together. We're ready. Are you ready for to present? Yeah. To your colleagues. You're good. Great. Right. On time. Do my best. These cats. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for I thought that smooth over right there. Is there a way we could get it make it possible to see as well as here? Yeah, with the draft priorities, questions, and indicators. So whatever you've got for a draft, can you all email it, whoever your note taker was, email it to Libby and she's going to add it to this note doc so that we can be looking at it as well as hearing it. That's something that is at least very helpful for me as, to process information. And hopefully that'll help others as well. Nice. Thank you. Uh oh. Are you able to do it? Group three? I did it. It's been done. Yeah, just to Libby. She's going to put it in the notes doc. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Just change it to a fraction. <laughs> <laughs> the auto correct. Yeah. Ignore that. Okay. Mia, can I ask what the um what the goal is for tonight for this work? Yeah, hopefully tonight we'll leave with these draft indicators of success um, that, you know, you could, how did you, how did you lead the lead in? We will know we we're um, succeeding when, like you could start like a sentence with, we are, we know we are succeeding when, and then you finish the sentence with what those indicators of success look like. Ideally, we have that for each one of these priority areas by the end of this conversation which we're gonna spend about 10 more minutes on. So if we're not exactly there at the by eight o'clock, that's okay. We'll just pick it up where we leave off. Okay. But that's what we're aiming for. Okay. Kristen, hey. can you present for group one? Sure, so myself, Mia and Zach worked on goal number one, which we actually added to that to the language uh, for that goal and uh, we included wording um, around opportunity gap. Um, so in discussion with Libby um, talking about not only does you know academic achievement and the academic data matter, but uh, do students have equitable access to the opportunities in the district? Like do um, are we seeing you know students of different identities and backgrounds? Um, accessing AP offerings and accessing co-curriculars at, you know, at the same rate or percentage. Um, so we add an opportunity gap um, and our indicator reads, uh, every student is meeting academic proficiency regardless of identity or socioeconomic status and has equitable access to the opportunities they need and desire to succeed. Yep. Any initial thoughts on that as an indicator of success? Personally, I do better when I have time to read stuff. Sure. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Something that we talked about too, just like the next layer, right? Once that indicator is um, safe, that's you know finalized, that the next layer would be thinking about the data that we would request from administration that would also indicate <laughs> Um, you know, whether we, we've achieved that indicator. So um, it's a lot of indication, but uh, that's, uh, you know, we realize that that would be an additional layer to get specific within that because that's big and broad. And I think a lot of this stuff is we should get that information from the um, the, the um, equity group mm -hmm. that we hire. I mean, they're going to ask questions about a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. They'll have surveys and Mm -hmm. uh, small group meetings and stuff. Yeah, particularly around access, I think. Mm -hmm. 
I think as you continue to revise it, one thing I'm, I always look at for statements like this is anything that could bring in unconscious uh, bias. And so has equitable access to the opportunities could bring in some biases from staff and, and schools saying, yeah, everybody has access to it. So, yeah. so the kid to take advantage of it. And that's yeah. not the, we don't want to promote that thinking in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, so that would be just some, mm. some feedback for us to consider as we're making these indicators. Like let's not leave room for excuses. <laughs> Is the, is the idea that, that these will be measured or should be measurable because this reads to me more like a, like a mission and yeah. not an indicator. An indicator to me would be like the number of students meeting academic proficiency regardless, so on. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, yeah, I think that's where we were thinking like, yes, it, it's a broad statement. You know, it is, it is kind of, um, you know, mission vision oriented. And so that the next big step would be, you know, taking that indicator and then what do as a board, what will, would we be requesting from administration to really get into like the quantitative aspects of it? And we also talked about, is there, um, is there a need to hone in on a specific, um, you know, discipline or area of learning? Like, does, does it make sense to kind of showcase or, or highlight literacy in this piece, you know, working with the administration of like, where, what does achievement currently look like? You know, what is a high priority area that we may want to focus on in here as well? I would yeah. think that would become yearly or bi-yearly. Uh-huh tri-yearly, <laughs> that's, a, that's mm -hmm. even a term, you know, mm -hmm. so, because that that could shift. You know, I think this is an, a general umbrella document or, you know, and, and when we come for the beginning of the year and say our focus this year is on blank, you know, then, and all the data we're gonna show you is around this. Mm -hmm. I think that's appropriate. That could change every couple of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when I read this, I sort of think like this is always the goal, right? We always want everybody to be meeting academic proficiency, and we probably always have wanted that. Um, and so I keep going back to the idea of SMART goals, the specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And so I sort of agree with what Scott said in terms of like, this seems visionary and like, that I wonder if there could be, and maybe this is just the next step in the process as, as Kristen was sort of saying, um, but I wonder if there could be some like scaffolding towards this vision goal um, or indicator of success. Like that would be a, a wonderful success. I mean, I think we would maybe make national news <laughs> if this happens within a year, you know, or two years or three years. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to be like, um, pessimistic about it, but, you know, I, I just wonder if there could be, um, some more specific and time bound, like we want to see a certain percentage of improvement in scores or something like that. And are we looking at, at the state, uh, the new, what, what is the new test? Yeah. So are we going to be looking at that, which really can't be compared to anything else? from the past? Are we going to be looking at our own um, star data? Are we going to be like, which, what, what data are we looking at? Or are we looking at kids report cards and getting a three? Is that meeting proficiency? You know, and are we in, in this indicator, are we talking about my student, like my two children are meeting, are getting threes in all of their courses? You know, I, it's just, it raises questions for me about, it doesn't feel like a SMART goal. And I thought that that's the direction that we were moving in for these. Yeah. And I think that, you know, the um, kind of the, the, the focal language in this too is also regardless of identity or socio socioeconomic status, right? Like right. that's where it's like, yes, proficiency for all, but also, you know, shining a specific light on, you know, how do we, how do we get data, disaggregated data so that we know 
that regardless of, of identity and socioeconomic status, that achievement is, um, you know, is on par. There is not a, there is not a difference. I know. I almost think that that would be a better indicator is yeah. like that reading the data, you can't, you, there is no difference between, right. you know, if you disaggregate for marginalized groups. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I think that's where we were thinking next, next layer, next yeah. workshop, but I, I, and, and then I, and then like to make it actually like uh, more of a smart goal, like maybe for, like you said, focus on one for literacy for third grade, you know what I mean? Like something smaller and more achievable. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep us moving. This is really great feedback for us to use the next time around. Um, group two. Yeah, so actually, I mean, I think we discussed a little the, the difficulty of measuring this and also, you know, you know, you know, you oftentimes get what you measure. And I think because, um, you know, uh, because belonging and wellness are the things that I think we want to really have open and, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a constant process. We want to make sure that our indicators are multiple and that we're very careful about what they tell us. I mean, for instance, if we have a lot of people, you know, coming in and seeing the social workers and counselors, does that mean that we have a lot of problems or does that mean that we have a lot of people who will feel comfortable accessing health and we have the resources to give them that help? Um, or that help. Um, so is that a healthy thing or is it a not healthy thing? Um, so I think we have to be kind of careful about, you know, the indicators and and how we how we look at them and and I think look at them from multiple angles. You know, with that said, you know, the the things that we kind of looked at as I think more sources of information. And I think we're gonna have to have discussions about kind of whether we want to set goals or or goals make sense, you know, just given like you know, do we want a random number? We don't want, you know, we want to get under this many HHB, you know, reports. And, you know, does that make sense? And does that have, uh, you know, unintended consequences? Um, the dashboard that Jess set up, I think, gives us a lot of, of information about in-class behavior that we didn't have before. And I think we should use that, uh, you know, as an indicator and an informer of, of what's going on in, in the classrooms and particularly in terms of, you know, behaviors that are, um, you know, disruptive or might show signs that, you know, people are are agitated, anxious, um, you know, acting out, et cetera. Um, it's, you know, we thought it was really important for student surveys because there's a lot of, of things of that, uh, you know, particularly I think older students can mask. There's a lot of of students, you know, there's a lot of indications that there are students who are very either anxious or depressed who may not show it and may also be performing at high levels, um, uh, but not not feeling not feeling well, not feeling settled. Uh, so, you know, student surveys on on wellness and and getting that information down and, and asking students and trying to do that in as as you know many forms as we can, so that way. You know, students who might respond differently to, to different forms of information have the avenues to, to give them to us in a, a way that feels you know, safe and um, you know anonymous to them if, if that's what they're looking for. Uh, and you know, then you know, teacher surveys to uh, how are they feeling about the classes? You know, what are what are they seeing? What are they feeling? Um, you know, attendance is an indicator. Uh, oftentimes, you know, people who are not happy or uh, you know, are experiencing anxiety, depression, et cetera, uh, are, are much less likely to be in class. So how is our attendance looking? Um, uh, youth behavior risk surveys, uh, you know, the AOE does this, you know, Libby was telling us that the information is sometimes late and not presented in as helpful a manner as it could be, but um, you know, it does give a snapshot of what sort of unhealthy risk behaviors might be occurring, um, you know, at the high school. And that's, you know, obviously middle school, at middle school. Um, uh, you know, a an indicator of of, uh, you know, of wellness, et cetera. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, I think uh, and this is something that we can measure the resources that we have. Uh, and uh, the access to those resources. So, uh, you know, 
and we've done a great job, I think, of building this over the years, but we want to, I think, continue to build it. You know, the number of social workers we have, um, you know, counselors, um, and other things too. You know, are we providing you know, opportunities for yoga, meditation, et cetera, where where students can can have some time to um you know to to deal with uh you know stress anxiety etc in in healthy and productive ways uh in ways that are supported so those are kind of the things we came up with and i, I don't think they fit nearly into smart goals but i think we'd have to give some thought as to what the best way to fit them into smart goals so is. Was the, the behavior dashboard is a new tool yes and it's hopefully it's helping administrators give support to teachers and so how are teachers understanding that that tool and how is that not just what is it what data are we getting from about student behavior but how are teachers feeling about how they're supported with respect to the behavior that they're tracking now that they weren't tracking in the same way that's that's the goal of the whole thing and so teachers perception of of that support i think is an, an important indicator Any other thank you group two? Mm -hmm. Belonging group. Any initial thoughts from the rest of the board? All right, let's move to group three. Um, okay, yeah, I think those are all great ideas for belonging, safety, and wellness. I like the idea of offering more ways for, um, you know, opportunities for healthy activities during the school day for kids. Um, so we kind of did a similar sort of like brainstorm as group two and did not articulate it well into any sort of um, uh, indicator language or smart goal, but um, the big idea that came out of our brainstorming session was it it feels like we've come to a point where we probably need to, I'm not saying who said this in my group, <laughs> but that we probably, but we all agree. So we're uni unified in thinking that it's probably time to form a committee around communications because we've been talking about it for a while and we feel like it's a weakness of the board and unless we actually you know, assign this to some people, um, it, it might, we might end up, we run the risk of, of landing in the same place that, <laughs> that we're at now next year. Um, so measures of success, we talked about climate survey, which we said might end up happening through the evaluation committee. If we're evaluating the board's work, maybe that committee does a climate survey um, of the community or of the staff. Um, qualitative data from both the community through listening sessions and such, and also just from the board members. So we all kind of have, have been around, we've seen um, what our communication has been like, we've all stumbled or, or seen stuff kind of fall through the cracks or whatever. And can we this time next year say that we've improved? <laughs> um, so qualitative data in that form. Um, somehow finding a way to track our communication back to folks to make sure that we are sort of closing that loop of communication when we either get public comment or emails that we know that a response has been sent and that um, people feel that we are being responsive and, and listening to them. And that if there would be a, a spreadsheet of some kind or a Google survey, Sagey offered maybe there's some sort of tool that already exists, like a behavior dashboard that we could like tap into and use that system that already exists to, to track communication back to, to folks. Um, also just evidence of, you know, the idea has been thrown around to produce a newsletter or podcasting. Um, Nia has been doing great with her front porch forum posts and, <laughs> um, and then is there, if we do create something, do can we track, you know, visits to it through Google Analytics or something like that? Um, we talked about how Orca is such a great resource and that the videos are all there and public. And um, 
Sagey had the great idea of like, sometimes you have, you watch a YouTube video and it has like basically a table of contents along the bottom. So we're not sure what the um, technical limitations would be to try to create something like that for the videos. Do you have volunteers to be on the committee? I've actually suggested that we just don't have the capabilities. Okay. Cause that, cause it would be so nice to align it with the agenda, but maybe it's not possible. Anyway, so those would be some of those um, indicators of success. Can you all talk about, I guess that would come through in surveys and qualitative data, because I think an indicator of success is how, like, what, not what's the reception, like, is everybody happy with the news they're getting, but more just like, who who's hearing it yeah and, and what are they doing with it i think is another thing to be measuring i have no idea how you do that <laughs> so, yeah but i think that's maybe that comes through in the climate survey and the qualitative data yeah i think so mm -hmm. you can ask the committee members of the new commu communications mm -hmm. committee mm -hmm. well, should we go back an agenda item and <laughs> we might need to form that committee maybe next yeah. week maybe two weeks from now fine. yeah uh -huh. One thing that we we'll talked about up. is because there are there are like there are some committees that have four people on them. Maybe we could pull people from other committees, and you know, if they're willing. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah that's a point. That's uh, your idea of you know which we have running board of having like a a page where we a roundup kind of a roundup where we like track you know in subjects of. Yeah. Of you know intense community interest and we kind of give relative constant updates and 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 the biggest like concern we had about it was we put it up there and it wouldn't get populated. But if we have a communications committee, that could be the solution to making sure it, yeah. it's yeah, it's moving along. Yeah. Yeah. Great ideas. All right. I think this ends it here. Yes, we've made a few steps forward of progress. And um, when Jim, Libby and I are talking about how to about future board agendas, we'll figure out what the next pieces of work are to land these into either into, you know, more specific indicators of success. Great. Yeah, no, definitely. It's just super helpful. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Mia, for studying that. Policy monitoring are D16 proficiency based graduation requirements. Um, do I have a motion to approve uh, the D16 policy monitoring report? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? I just have one question. Yep. Um, in your monitoring report, Libby, you have an acronym PLP. What does that stand for? Personal Learning Plan. Thank you. Thank you for calling. <laughs> PLPs were a big thing. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. Uh, and then our third reading of the D22 selecting library materials policy. Um, I would, we did not meet. This so sh should we have fourth reading? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I just think we need to be better about I can I can step up and help be better about like scheduling the the first, third, and second or second and third readings to align with our meeting schedule with the policy committee. Okay. So and, that we don't just keep putting it up there with nothing new to see. Yeah. So which, which is fine. It's, 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 yeah, the it, as long as yeah. we acknowledge it. We'll get there. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. Um we can have as many readings as we need. All right, so we'll move on to a fourth reading. Uh, which brings us to the executive session. Um, do we want to make the motion with a helpful, handy language that Anna hopefully provided? I move to find that premature general public knowledge regarding contract negotiations would clearly place the board at a substantial disadvantage if discussed in public. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, second motion. 
I move to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing contract negotiations under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1A of Vermont statutes. So second. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. We will move into executive session and to 